Here's the story. <clears throat> <clears throat> there was a poor Jew in the time of the Baal Shem Tov that he heard about the Baal Shem Tov and he was very, very much wanted <clears throat> to go and see the Baal Shem Tov. His friends told him, his friends used to go there, but he didn't have any money and he had to work in order just to provide for his family. They lived like from hand to mouth. However it is, he saved up money and maybe people gave him money and finally, after years and years of saving and working, he had enough money to give to his wife for the month of Tishrei and to go to the Baal Shem Tov and be there for the month, month and a half. But he would get there before Tishrei and he would stay. So he, he uh, took his money and he started to travel. It's like a three-day journey. <clears throat> and he got to the Baal Shem Tov and he came into the Baal Shem Tov's uh, synagogue, his shul synagogue. And there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that were there just packing up the holiness of the place. It was just amazing. And he was just in awe and just, you know, so happy to be alive and have to be in the shul of the Baal Shem Tov. And he knew this was going to be an amazing experience. <clears throat> And he just wanted to be there for a short amount of time. Then he would go and look for a place to, to sleep and to, to stay. All of a sudden, he hears someone says, Shmerel from Atvatsk. And that's him. Shmerel of Atvatsk. Everyone's looking around. Who's Shmerel of Atvatsk? And he says uh, to somebody, I'm Shmerel. I'm Shmerel. I come from Atvatsk. He says, the Baal Shem Tov probably wanted to talk to you. So they, immediately, there's they part. It's between him and the Baal Shem Tov, there's absolutely nothing, no one's. And he says, Shmer al <clears throat> I don't believe that you came here. Okay. So he thought maybe it's a good thing. So he put his head down. Baal Shem Tov put his head down for a while. Nobody knows what it means. He says, Shmer al are you not ashamed? A person that's so defiled like you. To come into a holy place like this, a sinner, an evil person like you, that's filled with the, 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 the blemishes of sin, you come into my place of holiness, how dare you? So this Shemir al says, what? and he's trying to think, what did I do? You know, what, what could it be? The holy Baal Shem Tov, he sees the ra holiness radiating from the face of the Baal Shem Tov, and, but from his mouth is coming these terrible, and he's starting to think, what did I do wrong? What could I have done wrong? You know, maybe once I didn't feed the chickens on time. Maybe I did. He's thinking the Baal Shem Tov puts his head down again. He lifts his head up and says, get out. Get out. I don't want to see you here. Get out of here. So he, he has his little, you know, suitcase, and he just leaves. You know, everybody makes a space, and, and they just, he just leaves. So he's standing on the street can't believe it. You know, you've saved up for years to come here. And now the Baal Shem Tov, he said his name. It's no mistake. And he said these terrible things. What's he going to do now? So he's walking around like in a daze. So he hears somebody, hello. You want a, want a taxi? Want a, want a ride? Carriage? So he said, yeah, how much to Atvatsk? He said, oh, Atvatsk, that's, that's a, that's a three-day journey. That's a long journey. I'll take such and such, you know, I'll, we'll do it day by day. I'll take you the first night, and then it says, okay, I'll get it. So he gets in, he's traveling. Now, in those days, they couldn't travel at night, right? And so he's, he takes the, the, the carriage, it starts to get dark, and they get off at the first place. The carriage gets off at the first place, and he's, he says, okay, I'll, you know, I'll wait for you in the morning. I'll wait for you. And so he says, okay, but you have to pay up front. So he pays up front three days, waiting out. Goes into the into this inn, and he's all just totally destroyed by what just happened, and he can't understand what's going on. So he sits in the corner of this. Uh, there's like sort of you know a dining room. He sits in the corner, in sort of the shade, and he sits there and he's crying. He can't understand it. <clears throat> it's nighttime, right? So oh, there's also a lot of Hasidim that are coming to the Baal Shem Tov. And they also can't travel in the nighttime. So they stop off at this inn and they push a few tables together. 
<clears throat> it's only let's say five hours or something until the day comes. Uh, yet yeah, daybreak, <clears throat> and so they push a bunch of tables together, and they order vodka, and they start to sing. One of them, and they, they're starting to talk about words of Torah, and one of them says to another, uh, you see what's there on the corner? He says, what's in the corner? He looks in the corner. I don't know, someone's sitting there. He says, listen, it's, it's a Jew. It's a religious Jew sitting in the corner, and he's crying. How can there be a religious Jew five hours away from the Baal Shem Tov, and he's not happy? How can it be such a thing? This must be one of the Misnagdim. Misnagdim were Jews that hated the Hasidim. They thought the Hasidim were too wild. They hated them. It was a big movement. Must be one of those Misnagdim. What do we do with a Misnagdim? We have to show him love. We'll be friends with him. Mekarevim. So they go over to the corner and say, hello, my friend. How would you like to sit with us? I said, I don't. Please leave me alone. No, leave me alone. I, I don't feel good. He says, no, no. You be, you'll be happy. You have to, a Jew has to be happy. You have to be, you're not happy because you don't have any friends. Come sit with us. He says, listen, I, I really don't want to. Just please, just, just let me sit over here. No, come on. You can always leave if you want to. They sit him down <clears throat> and they say, okay, let's sing a couple songs. They sing a couple songs. He doesn't sing together. They say, you know what? Make a lachayim. So he says, no. As soon as he says no, like that, so they throw his mouth and they pour the lachayim in. And then they close his mouth. And he's got no choice. And he has to, he drinks the lachayim. And they give him some, uh, uh, what is it, a, a pickle or something. And they say, okay, let's sing some more. He says, no, no, I want to go. He says, you sure you don't make, you don't want another lachayim? He says, no. He opens up his mouth again, they give him another lachayim. They do this about three times. After about four or five times, he's already taking lachayim on his own. No, or they're taking lachayim. And they're singing and they're dancing. And the five hours passes like nothing. And the crow of the rooster, the rooster crows. They're happy they go outside. And they get into the carriage. And they go back to the Baal Shem Tov. Meanwhile, the, the driver of this guy who took him, he sees that he's going back to the Baal Shem Tov. He's happy. He's got his money. What does he care? So that's it. So they go back to the Baal Shem Tov. Meanwhile, our hero is totally drunk. They got him totally drunk. And they're saying, we're going to take him to the Baal Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov, is going to, he's going to see him. Then he's going to be happy. He'll turn into a chassid. So they bring him to the Baal Shem Tov. And they bring him there. And the place is packed with Jews, just like it was the day before. I'm packed with Jews, and they they stand them over there. This the Shmerel of Atvatsk, and they say, Shmerel, you're we're here, we're made it. Look at all these friends, look how happy it is. All of a sudden, the Baal Shem Tov yells out, Shmerel of Atvatsk. And they make up, oh, they say, Who is it? This, this guy said he was Shmerel. This must be him. So they make an opening like before, and the Baal Shem Tov, Shmerel of Atvatsk, he says to this man, he's standing, there's nothing between him and the Baal Shem Tov. It was like somebody took a, a bucket of cold water and poured it on the head of the Shmerel. Suddenly he came to. What's going on? Shmerel of Atvask. One second. Yesterday the Baal Tov kicked me out. Maybe that was a dream. Maybe, maybe now was a dream. Maybe now that I'm standing by the Baal Tov, that's not real. I'm sure that I left. No, maybe that that I left, that's the dream. And really, it was the Baal Shem Tov, Shmerel of Atkats, come closer. So they push him to the Baal Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov comes and he hugs him. He says, Shmerel of Atkats, you have no idea how happy I am to see you. So he says, I bet he doesn't know what to say. He says, probably you're wondering what's happening. The Baal Shem Tov says, yesterday I kicked you out of here like a dog. And now I'm hugging you like you're my only son. He says, well, I want to tell you something. The Baal Shem Tov said, when you came in here yesterday, I saw the angel of death dancing over your head. And I knew that you're not going to live for another week. As soon as I saw that, I put my head down and I prayed. I said, God, enough problems with the Jewish people. Here we have a good, honest person. He has a family. <clears throat> what do you want to kill him for? What the I opened up my eyes. I saw the angel of death was still dancing over your head. So I said, okay. It says that if you embarrass someone, that that's like you kill him. So I decided I'm going to embarrass you, even though there's a big punishment for embarrassing someone. I'm going to embarrass you in front of everybody, and that'll be like I killed you, and then maybe the angel of death will leave you. So I said, you're an evil person. How could you think of coming in here to this pure place? You know that I embarrassed you to the, to the essence of your bones. 
And I looked and it didn't help. I saw the angel of death is still dancing. So I thought to myself, said the Baal Shem Tov, with the angel of death, you got to be clever. I'll throw you out of here. I'll evict you. For sure, you're not going to just stand around and wait. You're going to feel so miserable. You're going to take the first carriage back. And the first carriage back, it's a three-day journey to Advatsk. You can't travel at night. For sure, you're going to stop off at an inn. When you go to an inn, you're not going to be able to go to sleep. You're going to feel so heartbroken and miserable. You'll probably sit in some corner. Meanwhile, there's also Hasidim that are coming the other direction. They also can't travel at night. They'll also stop off at an inn. But the Hasidim, they also won't be able to go to sleep because they're so happy. When a Hasid is happy, what does he do? He gets together and they sing, they make l'chaim. So when a Hasid is happy, when anyone's happy, they can't stand to see someone that's miserable. The Hasidim are going to see you sitting there miserable, and they're going to makar of you. They're going to befriend you and draw you closer. When Hasidim are drawing a person closer, what do they do? They give him to drink vodka. What do you do when you say vodka? When you drink vodka, you say l'chaim. L'chaim. <clears throat> well, if there's three Jews that keep Shabbat, and they decide something, that's like a judicial court. A judicial court. So if these Hasidim, they all say, L'chaim, L'chaim, it's like a judicial court that made a decision for life. L'chaim means to life. And the law is that if a judicial court decides something in this world, that God obeys that judicial court. Lo the Torah is not up in heaven, it's in this world. So because all the Hasidim, they got together and they all said, L'chaim, L'chaim, is they decided <clears throat> that you're going to live. And their decision, <clears throat> God had to obey. And I see now when you came in, the angel of death was not dancing over your head. So that we have to remember every time that we say, L'chaim, I believe, Racha, and blessing that what we do in this world has an effect even on the upper worlds for good, long, healthy, blessed, happy life. Have a good day with Mashiach. And I'll see you all tomorrow with Mashiach now.